Well, here we are again. So, hello everyone. Um, and today uh, we're going to make a, a small speech uh, commenting two or three articles uh, that speak about image in tendon pathology and uh, about the anatomical aspects of the Achilles tendon, specifically the Achilles tendon rotation. So, um, let's just start. In this article of uh, 2016, uh, it's a real, uh, a really good uh, systematic review and meta-analysis published in the British journal Sports Medicine um, that says uh, that it's a meta-analysis of 17 randomized control trials in athletes, and um, we all we all we all know that um, structural changes in tendon pathology cannot be uh, considered by themselves as a predictor of tendinopathy and that clinical symptoms are the most important thing in tendon pathology. We all know that and this is absolutely true. But uh, in this article, they found that um, a symptomatic tendon with a structural changes in ultrasound has five times more risk of developing tendinopathy. That doesn't mean, in my opinion, that we have to act uh, if we found just the structural changes, but we um, and, and, and the patient has not uh, pain and the functionality of the tendon is conserved. Um, but uh, in my opinion, at least in my experience, I just follow up a little bit more that patients um, just to see if they develop symptoms in, in the next uh, few weeks or something like this. So this article really notes and the conclusion uh, says that sonographic changes plus predisposing factors such as an increase of the workload as always and alterations of the biomechanical axis of the lower limb or inadequate materials can help in the prediction of these tendinopathies in my opinion i also can say that uh, for me what is really really important to control are risk factors of every individual athlete or every individual uh, person uh, to prevent or to treat tendinopathies problems. So if we can assess the risk factors, uh, we can treat or we can change this functionality of the tendon. And uh, as you all know, and everyone says, if the tendon uh, improves its function, it is normally preserved from pain. So this is really important to know. Another important article uh, in 2016 also is uh, one that uh, talks about the rotation of the Achilles tendon. We, we, we know that the Achilles tendon uh, makes a rotation from proximal to distal, so uh, there is a contribution uh, to, to conform the Achilles tendon from the lateral gastrocnemius, the soleus and the medial gastrocnemius, but these three parts makes a complete rotation from proximal to distal uh, until the calcaneal insertion. So in this, in this article, it is described this kind of rotation. We can know also in this other article from Scandinavian Journal of Sports, uh, Science and Sports, uh, in 2017, they described three different types of rotation, type 1, type 2, type 3. So it's much more difficult that uh, what it seems there is not just one uh, anatomical rotation, there are three different types. And they divide the structure, the Achilles tendon distal part in these three types as you can see here. So if we follow the gastrocnemius lateralis muscle, it starts here in the type one and gets a rotation from its most distal part. The same in type two and the same in type three. So we 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 can know that to see the evolution of every part of the Achilles tendon from proximal to the distal insertion. Here we can see also the distribution of type one, type two, type three, and they really said that the uh, normally type one and type two are the most frequent ones in in the in the exploration in the normal exploration. So that can be that can be. Uh, you, you can think maybe that this is a quite a freaky thing uh, about um, ultrasound or about anatomy and it's just a, 
uh, theoretical knowledge and it has no meaning in the clinical practice but yes we can find uh, some um, some applicability of this kind of, of knowledge um, we have to know that for example in uh, ultrasound we can follow all these rotations here we have uh, two legs and uh, we have to know that the left uh, leg rotates anti-clockwise and the right leg rotates clockwise direction so this is quite quite important because as you can see here when I put the video on you can see this part and look that it's moving and it's make a rotation in anti-clockwise direction and the right one look at this it's moving in that direction so it's quite difficult to see if you're not uh, if you normally don't see ultrasound but let's put it again look at this part here it's moving round here until its insertion nearly the calcaneal bone so um, okay we, we see that in ultrasound so uh, does have it any applicability in clinical practice yeah it's difficult but um, sometimes we can see small partial tears of the of the Achilles tendon uh, that it's going that are longitudinal splits of this Achilles tendon and they're coming from proximal to distal so uh, if we look closely we can say for example that this tear here it's moving so I put it again look it starts here and it's rotating down to here so if we really want and we really need it uh, we can say from which part this partial tear this longitudinal split of the Achilles tendon came from so it can be um, it can be quite important uh, there is a there is another article I, I haven't put it here uh, I think it's from Mafuli et al and it's published in um, in journal of bone and joint research I think I think it's that um, that that journal uh, that distributes some partial Achilles tears uh, into the into the region where they came from so it could be quite important in order to treat a specific part of the calf muscle uh, of the calf muscles so uh, and what we really know and what we have to remember also is that the Achilles tendon look at this longitudinal panoramic view in ultrasound the Achilles tendon is formed completely by the aponeurosis of the gastrocnemius the aponeurosis of the soleus and they uh, abruptly fuse and form the proximal Achilles tendon and finally the Achilles tendon itself so it is not strange it is not rare to see injuries affecting the distal part of the gastrocnemius medialis that expands through the free aponeurosis of the Achilles uh, of the uh, medial gastrocnemius sorry and finally they make a partial or a complete tear of the Achilles tendon all in the same injury mechanism so and this is important to know because anatomically it's like this here we have the aponeurosis of the gastrocnemius here we have the free aponeurosis of the gastrocnemius medialis and here we can see the aponeurosis of the soleus muscle and here the soleus muscle itself that it's very much longer and it uh, also um, attaches directly in the final part of the Achilles tendon so that's why we not say that there is a free aponeurosis of the soleus muscle and here the plantaris the plantaris tendon between between both so we have to know and we have to understand that this is a whole complex about gastrocnemius soleus and achilles tendon so that's everything <clears throat> for today let's uh let's see you maybe maybe tomorrow maybe in two days hope you 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 enjoy uh, a little bit just to uh pass this quarantine uh, a little bit better yeah thank you